All right. Hi, I'm Sarah Malini. Welcome to Ayurvedic Living for the Spring. I'm also very excited because I got my four and a half month down to for a nap like six minutes ago. So we're doing really well. Um, so every season is an opportunity to recalibrate. The environment is doing that. And Ayurveda is very much um, built around the process of allowing ourselves to be influenced and to imitate our environment. And this is happening regardless of whether we're participating, but we can become more aligned, more feeling more whole, more connected when we do that, as opposed to trying to work against the season. So for example, in the winter, there is a natural coming in of our attention. The bodies tend to get a little bit fuller. We ha are able to digest heavier foods. We have interest in eating heavier foods because this is what the environment outside is also doing, right? The ground is becoming hard. It's covered. Everything that's happening, all the life that is happening is underground. It's all pulled in, right? Bears are literally hibernating for all of those months. And so if we try to do what we do in the summer to eat like we eat in the summer to express ourselves like we do in the summer in the winter it just becomes a lot of work um, and it's difficult to maintain and emotionally and mentally we feel this struggle and also our physical self our system also senses that struggle um, and so better to pay attention to what's growing in the environment in the winter or what you've harvested for the winter and eat those things and eat the way that you would, um, that the environment is asking us to do. So obviously we wouldn't want to eat like frozen things in the winter, um, raw salads, smoothies, it doesn't really sound very good. Um, and especially we need to be a little bit more conscientious because now we can adapt our internal environments, our houses and our cars to be whatever temperature, whatever environment they always are. And so we might actually be feeling very hot in the winter. And so therefore we think we should be eating salads and smoothies and things like this. But that is another uh, modern amenity, which is awesome, right? But that can really create a separation between what is happening in reality, which is that it is cold and it is dark and it is internal an internal time in the winter. And so the transition from winter to spring is a really big one and Ayurveda focuses on it really uh, intently. There's two seasons where mainly where this happens, the transition from winter into spring and then the transition from summer into fall because these are really big adjustments that the body and the mind need to make to feel aligned as we move into these two different colors, these two different times. So there's the Uttarayan call, which is the one that we've just entered with the solstice, right? It's the sun is moving toward its zenith. Uh, everything is warming, is blooming, is growing, is becoming more alive. And the fall is the Dakshinayan call, which is the time when everything starts to pull back in. And so it's important that we pay attention to these two, these two major shifts, because like I said, if we try and live one way the whole year, it just becomes very, very difficult. And even if you if you're mentally capable of doing it, your digestion gets essentially left behind. So what in the world do we do now? So if we think about the winter, it's cold and it's contracted. It's a time where kapha dosha, which is ruled by earth and water elements, are accumulating, but they're accumulating very slowly and they're accumulating in a way that's difficult to notice because it's so cold. And what does cold do to liquid? It turns it into ice right? It freezes it. And so it actually, it seems like it's taking up a lot less space in the body, right? Ice takes up a lot less space than, for example, water does. But what happens is after the solstice or around the solstice, as the sun starts to rise, as the there is more sunlight in the day than there is darkness, right? We have more opportunity to engage with the outdoors. Things begin to melt. And so what starts to happen is this ice that was contracted and accumulating throughout all of winter is now released. And where does it release? Basically through your face, <laughs> right? This is like allergies, right? You get runny eyes, runny nose, like excess salivation. You're more inclined toward getting colds and flus around this time also because 
that as the body is starting to wake up, it's also being kind of accosted by all of this liquid element that is that was always there, but it was kind of contained. So the sun reveals the kapha dosha that was always present and accumulating throughout the winter. And so what we need to do, what this does to the digestion, we'll start there. So our digestive capacity is strong in the winter because that liquid is not really presenting itself in an active way and the body is contained. So if you think about a fire, right, if you build the wood around the fire it properly, it burns really strongly for a really, really long time because it's protected from excessive wind and excessive um, interaction with the elements that are surrounding it. But what happens when you start to pour water on top of that fire, the wood starts to get damp, it sparks, it doesn't really hold the flame and it just kind of smokes. And so that's kind of where our physical body is now. Our digestive capacity, though it was strong because of the contraction of the body and the strength of the body and the increase of earth element of the body all winter is now damp. And if you're in California, it's been raining for like two months straight, right? The earth is completely saturated or maybe you're in places where there's snow and you're getting that last dump of snow or wherever, whatever environment you happen to be in. I'm sure you can pay attention and notice the nuances of the coming spring and how it feels physically different outside than it did a few weeks or months ago. So now our digestive fire inundated with this liquid element and so it's not as strong as it was in the heart of winter so what do we do we have to adapt the way that we eat the way that we sleep the way that we interact with the world and transition us out of that dampness by burning it up or by drying it out and so this is the essence of the way we adapt our living styles for the spring so um reviewing some notes okay so one of the things that we need to do is sometimes challenging but necessary is to get up earlier so we need to get up before the sun we're trying to dry up all this liquid element so we need to add dryness and roughness to the day i this is a kind of a gross uh, metaphor but you know, if someone throws up on the ground, maybe it's because I have a baby. <laughs> so I think about that all the time, right? One of the best things you can do is like throw sawdust on top. We don't throw sawdust on top because that's messy, but that dryness and roughness absorbs all of that liquid, makes it really easy to sweep up. So we need to add this roughness and dryness to our physical presence, to our physical experience of the day. And one of the best ways to do that is to get up a little bit earlier than we want to. So before sunrise is ideal. If where you live, I guess it depends on the location you are in the on the planet. Um, this is also assuming that we are all above the equator. So if you live below the equator, you are doing the transition from fall from from summer into fall. Uh, and so these are not these are things you'll remember for the next big season shift. But if you are above the equator, it also depends on where you are on the globe how early you're going to need to get up to try and beat the sun. But that waking up in the darkness, that feeling of like, oh, I don't wanna get up yet. That is this the element, the quality of roughness that we need to imbue into our bodies to help us absorb all this liquid that has accumulated, that is leaving us feeling heavy, dense, um, and just kind of lethargic overall. We're trying to add sun into our body so that we can also interact and absorb properly the sun that is outside of our body without it just melting the kapha dosha that has accumulated and leaving us feeling kind of gross. So my recommendation, get up before sunrise and really get up. So don't just like wake up and lie in bed and look at your phone. Don't look at your phone, <laughs> wake up and get out of bed immediately. And then the recommendation is to potentially either start by drinking a warm glass of water because warm water or hot water would be even better, has a heaviness to it. So it'll start to push your digestive system into action just through that like weight of gravity. And the warmth is a little bit agitating. So it will start to scrape what's what it's interacting with 
and help you have a satisfying bowel movement. If that's something you struggle with, a warm, really a hot glass of water in the morning once you wake up is a wonderful way to get that going. Before or after this, I recommend you exercise. So it can be very difficult to exercise in the morning, but once you get it going, it can feel pretty awesome if you're someone who likes to work out in the morning. But this adds a lot of roughness. Obviously, it adds heat, so it allows, it encourages the body to dilate, which lets things move around more quickly. This is the opposite of what was happening in the winter, right? There was a contraction. So your body was able to hold on to things more often and more easily. And now we're trying to move into the opposite experience. So we're trying to open the body up. So this is through warmth, through heat, through roughness, through movement. So get out of bed early, have a warm glass or a hot glass of water. Doesn't need to be a lot, like a cup or a little bit less. You don't want to, you know, drown yourself, right? Because we already have all of this excess um, water in our bodies. But heat is a drying factor, regardless of whether you do dry saunas or, you know, wet saunas. It, they have a drying factor because that is the nature of heat. So adding heat to the water delivers this dryness to your the quote unquote water channels of the body. After this, I recommend you exercise. It doesn't need to be a long time. You just need to break a little bit of a sweat. Just a sweat on the forehead is kind of all Ayurveda suggests. Or maybe you're someone who breaks out and sweat on the chest first. But you just need to see a couple beads of sweat uh, reveal themselves in the areas where you tend to sweat first. This can be really simple. You can do some pranayama, some breathing exercises that are invigorating, that allow dilation of the channels of the body. This can be Surya Namaskar, sun salutations. Uh, it doesn't need to be an hour. It can be 20 minutes of vigorous, committed, thoughtful, and precise movement. So the other reason we need to add this concept of precision is because precision itself is an, it has the nature of fire element, right? Being direct, placing your foot here specifically, thinking about when you're doing your yoga asanas, if that's what you're choosing to do, being focusing on angles, on sharpness, making sure your hands aren't asleep, right? Fingers together, thumbs touching your the other fingers, sharpness through the joints, angles, right? As opposed to just kind of like dancey fluidity. We're trying to remove fluidity from our system. And so we want to make sure that when we're exercising, we're not like overly interested in fluidity. We're trying to find angles to cut through the gunk, to create some space. So when you're doing sun salutations, make sure you move, pause, move, pause, as opposed to letting one posture flow into the next, for example. When you're doing your breathing exercises, make sure your inhales don't just become your exhales. Your exhales don't just become your inhales. Measure the length of your breath. So you might inhale for three counts and then pause for one. Exhale for three counts and then pause for one right? So that you're creating some, some clarity in the system, infusing clarity, brightness, uh, specificity into the system, which is essentially the opposite of the winter where everything is kind of pulling in. I did, I have uh, oil in my nose and it's coming out of my nose, which I also recommend you do. So after you finish your, your exercise, the only exercise for the day, but it can be, um, I recommend you brush your teeth. You scrape your tongue with a copper tongue scraper. So don't brush your tongue with your toothbrush. It kind of just pushes everything that was on your tongue in deeper. It doesn't actually clean your tongue. So brushing the teeth, right, is obviously extremely rough. It is pulling off the gunk that's accumulated on your teeth throughout the night. And then when you scrape your tongue, you're pulling all of that excess accumulation that you gathered throughout the night off your tongue as well. This is really important, especially in the spring. If you're concerned with like losing winter weight, et cetera, or you're just feeling kind of heavy, cleaning your tongue is a really important activity to include in your regimen because your tongue obviously is the sense organ that interacts with taste. And if you cannot clearly taste your food, you will have a very hard time knowing if you're full. And this is one of the first places we tend to um, one of the first spaces where we can protect ourselves from overeating is really understanding how things taste 
and you have to clean your organ of taste to do that. So brushing the teeth, scraping the tongue, you've already exercised. Now you're going to do a very gentle oil massage of your body. If you have time for this, I really recommend it. It can be very simple. Just warm almond oil up and vigorously massage your body. So you want to start at the feet and then work your way up because we're trying to allow the energy to rise through the body. So you'll start your feet, you go uh, vigorously like this on the long bones, and then you circle the joints also vigorously. You only wanna use enough oil so that your hands can move smoothly. And you want to make some friction, right? Cause friction is rough and dry and warm. So you do this throughout the entire body. Then you're gonna get in the shower. The shower is gonna be super hot. If you're someone who's got extra time in the day, you could get in like a little steam box. Um, there are like these like pop-up tent steam boxes you can buy for a hundred bucks online. So you could do that too. You only need about five minutes to again, break a sweat. What this does is it opens your pores and allows your body to absorb the oil, but it also creates that movement in the body that we're trying to interact with throughout the day like I've just been describing so far this morning. So a lot of stuff happens in the morning because the morning is kapha time. So we really need to cut through kapha time. Kapha time, the time of heaviness of earth and water being at its most prominent is between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. So you wanna end 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. So in the morning, we need to make sure that we're not moving in the way of kapha or we will feel sluggish all day long. So we have to do the opposite of what though that time is expressing to um, be properly invigorated for the spring. So after that, you jump in your hot shower and you get a sisal brush or like a natural body scrub and you just kind of scrub the skin. Again, it's rough, it's dry, it's slightly agitating. It will get you going. If you have not gone to the bathroom already, you surely will go after this. After you get out of the shower, you can put some oil in your nose. This cleans your senses, this brightens the eyes, this allows you to kind of like nourishes the, the senses of the mind of the, and just in general, the senses, touch, taste, feel, smell, et cetera. I think I repeated the sense, <laughs> but you know, the five senses that you have. And then what I recommend you do is you get out of the shower, get dressed, wear bright clothing. So don't dress in drab winter colors. So bright spring colors um, so that you're, they can tantalize your eyes. This is what's happening outside, right? The flowers are not blooming black. The flowers are blooming in like bright pinks and oranges and the greens are really vivid. And so that is how we're trying to reflect in our, the way that we dress. And then potentially you could have breakfast if you're hungry. Another thing that you can do to while you're making your breakfast is um, prepare a drink that you'll drink throughout the entire day instead of plain water. So again, we're trying to get rid of this excess water in the body. So we want to infuse our water with other qualities so that you can deliver those qualities again, like I mentioned earlier, to the water channels. So how do you do this? You boil like a liter and a half of water with substances like barley, with mint, with hibiscus, these are all kind of drying substances. They're on the hot, warmer side, although mint is not, so it'll kind of make sure it doesn't overheat your body. So you boil it for like 10 to 15 minutes. And again, remember heat itself is drying. So like that cooking of the water for that long adds dryness to the water. Then you'll filter it and you'll put it in a thermos and you'll sip that all day instead of plain water. Make sure that it's warm or hot when you drink it. I always recommend adding local honey to your warm teas, but you cannot reheat honey. So if you're going to put that liter of water of that infused tea in your thermos and your thermos doesn't keep things warm, don't add the honey until you've reheated the water, then you add the honey. Local honey is awesome, especially if you're someone who tends to get allergies because it has the pollen digested by the bees, of course, from your environment, from your native environment. And as you digest that more, your body will become a little bit more acclimated to the environment that's around you through digestion. But a lot of the reason that we have allergies and like these spring fevers is because our digestive capacity is super sluggish and we can't process what we're consuming. 
So just in general, there should be more structure in the spring. You get up at a specific time, you should eat breakfast if you're going to eat it no later than like 8 a.m. You should be eating lunch no later than 1 p.m. Dinner should be eaten no later, no, no, no later than 7 p.m. Um, really, we should not be consuming alcohol at this time because it's kind of heavy. Coffee is obviously not recommended by Ayurveda um, because it's slimy. It is hot, but it's kind of oily in its nature. So it's not going to help you in the spring for sure. And it's going to create a false sense of energy. And that can, can lead to these troubles that I was just describing. So in terms of food, what do you eat for breakfast? It should be pretty light. I always recommend if you don't know what to eat, like a mung dal soup or a red lentil soup, or you could grate up ginger and carrot and daikon radish. So radishes are wonderful for absorbing liquid. They're pretty bitter. Um, and then you can, you know, add some warming spices like cumin, coriander, black pepper, and just a little bit of salt. So in the spring, salt is not your buddy. In general, the only salt Ayurveda recommends is Himalayan, uh, like Himalayan salt, that pink salt. Uh, everything else can create too much heat in the body, can lead to ulcers, and also can uh, encourage swelling, which we're trying to get rid of, right, from this accumulation of kapha dosha that is now releasing in the spring. I know I'm saying a lot. Um, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Does anyone have any questions before I keep going? Okay, cool. So breakfast no later than seven, I'm sorry, no later than 8 a.m. Oh, Kelly. Yep, go ahead, Kelly. What would you like to ask? I don't see anything in the chat. You can unmute yourself if you aren't already and then ask. Okay, well, I'll keep going and perhaps I'll answer your question. So we need to add this structure to our day because structure itself is fire element. It's very helpful to break through that lethargy of kapha dosha. So make sure that you get on a schedule and commit to it at least for like three weeks as we transition into spring. And most likely you'll just kind of commit to that schedule because it becomes like a new habit. In terms of foods, in general, we wanna be eating bitter foods. That's what's growing, right? Dandelion, burdock root. Um, what are some other good ones? um charred bitter gourd if you're living in a city where you can access that is awesome although it definitely needs cooking very well cooked um, experience mustard greens which are bitter but they're also on the hotter side right because they create the mustard the mustard plant collard greens radishes of all kinds daikon is awesome jicama um, cruciferous vegetables this is like the cauliflower things like that um, chicory, beets, turnips, turnip greens. These are all wonderful things to be consuming. You can consume them for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, um, especially in the spring. And this is what's growing. So if we're really connected to our environment, if we shop at, if we're able to shop at farmer's markets, the farmers aren't most likely going to be growing anything that can't actually naturally grow in the ground. This is the time to put away the potatoes, to um, reduce the breads and things like this. Um, you can also cook, I recommend cooking with pomegranate juice, or you could drink hot water infused with pomegranate juice if you didn't prefer the tea that I recommended a little while before. Um, cranberry juice, you can mix a little bit of that in warm water. So not a lot of juice, but these juices are really astringent. They'll help you kind of soak up the liquid that's in your body. And pomegranate juice especially is wonderful to, for digestion if you're someone who tends toward constipation drinking pomegranate juice or cooking with pomegranate juice is wonderful. So you could even put a little bit of pomegranate juice in that breakfast soup that I had recommended. Um, you can also stew apples and pears or like saute apples and pears in warming spices. Warming spices is not like spicy, like chili, which is appropriate in the spring, but that's not what I'm talking about here. Warming spices are like um, clove, cinnamon, cardamom, that would be really nice. A little bit of black pepper, 
you could put on the stewed apples and pears, and then you can add raisins to that. Raisins are really wonderful for metabolism specifically if you experience constipation or just like incomplete feeling of your stools. Um, spices to generally be cooking with, parsley, awesome, cilantro, mint, cumin, coriander, fennel, ginger powder. Fenugreek is exceptional in the spring. It will help you purify all the waters of your body. Uh, mustard, black pepper, especially. So I wouldn't recommend just buying black pepper that's already been crushed if you can get the whole seeds and then grind them yourself. It'll be a little bit more potent. Uh, Himalayan salt, aka rock salt only. And then local honey. Turmeric is also wonderful in this season. It's very, very cleansing. People call turmeric like an, what's the word that people will use? It, they, they will like say it pulls out inflammation and that's actually not true uh, because it's heating. So it can actually make inflammation worse. But if you have swelling, turmeric can be really wonderful for that. So if you feel kind of like puffy and bloated, turmeric's a great choice because it's dry, but it's heating. So if you're suffering from like sores and things that are like burning, I wouldn't recommend going for turmeric, though it does clean. And the reason it cleans is because it's astringent. Um, and then in general, in the spring, your food should be warm. So you, this is not a time for raw stuff or cold stuff, cold drinks, no ice, no salads, no, because your digestive system has been inundated with this liquid and it needs assistance with digestion. And so when you cook your food, it's like essentially pre-digesting your food. Um, this is going to permit you to have all that fun stuff come summertime when everything is a little bit more mobile and active and ideally your digestion has been clarified throughout the spring. And so this is when you can get away with eating salads, raw foods, the occasional smoothie. Ayurveda is not really into smoothies specifically, but um, this is the time. So if you treat yourself well in the spring, if you prepare yourself well in the spring, your summer will feel glorious. You will feel like the summer in your body. But if you just go from a winter diet to a summer diet, you will suffer <laughs> tremendously uh, with just like chronic rhinitis and you'll be more likely to catch colds and you just like won't feel like you want to be active anymore. So use the spring as a time to infuse yourself with this structure, with this warmth, with this um, clarity and your summers will feel really well well, um, you'll be pre prepared for the summer and you'll be able to live it to its fullest. And you'll feel in line with the spring because this is what the environment is doing in the spring. It's preparing for this burst of bloom that comes at the end of spring and then um, is the most vibrant in the beginning of summer. So that is essentially Ayurvedic living for spring. Eat light, let your let your lunch be your biggest meal of the day. If you're not hungry, don't eat. So don't force yourself to eat. Don't starve yourself either. Um, don't over drink liquid. Everything should be served warm and get moving. Get up early, early to bed, early to rise. Uh, don't eat too close to sleeping. That also increases this experience of lethargy just in general. This is a rule. So that's kind of the summary. Um, I wanted to let you know that I am actually launching a cleanse. I like to call it a reset because I think the term cleanse is a little bit, has like a little bit of a negative connotation, but it is a five day reset spring, preparing you then for summer. Um, and you can do it any to any five days from April 5th to May 5th. It will launch tomorrow. And if you have attended this lecture and you want to have a discount, you get one. So you can type in L I L. 2023 as the discount code, you can access 10% uh, off the cost of the cleanse. It's do it yourself, but you will get um, recorded videos from me telling, giving, guiding you through breath work, guiding you through yoga classes, yoga practice that you'll just do every morning. And then you'll get this handout with recipes and instructions for what to do for these five days and also how to transit transition out. Right. So if you're doing any cleanse, you should not just abruptly start and then abruptly stop because it basically undoes everything that you've set forth to do. 
Um, but that will be available on my website starting tomorrow. It goes live and you can get 10% off with LIL 2023. This is called, it's called the Spring Reset Cleanse. And my website is yogavahi.com. So Y-O-G-A-V-A-H-I.com. You'll find it in the events page. So we are now officially out of time. I uh, will open for a few moments with quest for questions. If anyone has anything you'd like to ask, you can either unmute yourself and join in that way to share or, or ask, or you can type it in the chat. Hey, Sarah, sorry, I was trying to connect to audio earlier and it wasn't working. Um, hopefully oh, yeah. you can hear me now, but what yeah. is the take on oats at this point? Because um, I do a lot of oats in the morning with, with cooked apples and raisins and all that. Is this a time to kind of remove that or? You or can have oats in? still. Oats, the thing that's nice about oats is that they're quick. Um, so I don't think that you necessarily need to cut them out, but you could reduce the portion. So you could increase the, um, and or and or uh, increase the spicing. So just make sure that there's like plenty of cinnamon, plenty of cardamom, um, clove, black pepper. Um, I wouldn't okay. put ghee on top of it now, stuff like that. Later okay. in the spring, when digestion has kind of been reset, you can go back to the to ghee, which is actually great all year round. But when if you're experiencing experiencing sluggish digestion. Um, you can cut that stuff out. You can also add raisins and cranberries, like dry cranberries to that. And it, okay. um, it will yeah, that's usually kind of what add I do. that astringent. So. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. But I've never done um, black pepper, so it actually sounds good. I'll go yeah. add that and, in there. You know, it, you switch it up. You can also like use different grains. So you could do a barley porridge or a buckwheat porridge, um, amaranth or millet, or even quinoa. These are all like lighter grains, but if you know you have five minute oats and, and you only have five minutes, then stick with the oats and just focus on the spicing and the portion. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, let me just put my website in here. I think I can type it. Yeah, okay, yogavahi.com. And you'll go to the events page. This is if you want to do the cleanse. And then your code is LIL2023. And that will be good for about a week once it launches. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming. It's always wonderful to be here together. I'll have a regular class on the schedule again once I have a better um, system with my daughter and her nap time. It's not always exact. So thank you so much and have a wonderful thank you. spring. You're welcome. Thank you.